In the remote, desolate town of Blackwood, nestled deep within the cursed Appalachian Mountains, a sinister legend loomed over the inhabitants for centuries. It was whispered in hushed tones, a grotesque tale of despair and darkness that refused to die. The legend spoke of an unholy entity, a creature known as the gluttonous aberration, on a bitterly cold, moonless night, a group of unsuspecting friends decided to investigate the legend. They gathered in a rickety old cabin near the town, armed with stories of bravery and liquid courage in the form of moonshine. Their breath hung in the frigid air as they set out, following a trail through the dense, eerie forest, the woods, cloaked in shadows and silence, held an atmosphere of malevolence. Twisted trees seemed to reach out for them, and strange, unidentifiable sounds echoed through the darkness. Whispers of despair and hunger lingered in the wind, as the group journeyed deeper into the forest, they stumbled upon an abandoned, overgrown cemetery. The gravestones were weathered, and the engravings had eroded with time. One stone, however, was different a massive, obsidian obelisk, devoid of any inscription. At its base, a crude circle was etched into the earth, almost like a summoning circle, a sense of foreboding overcame the group, but their morbid curiosity pushed them onward. They decided to conduct a scene, believing that if they could communicate with the spirit of the gluttonous aberration, they could uncover the truth of the legend, with candles, incantations, and the offering of a lamb's heart, they summoned the entity. What emerged was an abomination, a writhing mass of tentacles, eyes, and pulsating flesh. Its grotesque form eclipsed their sanity, and their screams filled the night. The gluttonous aberration spoke in horrifying, guttural tones, revealing the unspeakable origin of its power. It had feasted upon the souls of the desperate and starving, absorbing their suffering into itself. Its hunger for misery was insatiable, the entity's presence drove the group to madness. One by one, they succumbed to their innermost fears and desires. The saints had unlocked a gateway to their darkest nightmares, and the gluttonous aberration devoured their torment, growing more monstrous with each soul consumed, the friends, now nothing more than husks of humanity, were dragged into the earth by the tentacles that had emerged from the circle. The saints had unleashed a terror that would haunt Blackwood for generations to come. As the sun rose over the desolate town, a cold, eerie silence enveloped the forest. The legend of the gluttonous aberration lived on, a testament to the depths of darkness and the grotesque horrors that could be unleashed when humanity's darkest desires were confronted, and so, the cursed Appalachian Mountains retained their dreadful secret, hidden within the shadows of Blackwood, waiting for the next group of curious souls to tempt fate and awaken the insatiable appetite of the gluttonous aberration. Decades passed, and the legend of the gluttonous aberration continued to plague Blackwood. It was a town consumed by fear, its residents perpetually haunted by the tales of the creature in the woods. Doors remained locked, and curtains drawn as the sun dipped below the horizon. No one dared venture into the depths of the forest anymore. Then, one fateful night, Sarah, a young woman who had recently moved to Blackwood, found herself drawn to the legend. She had always been fascinated by the macabre and the unknown, and the chilling stories of the gluttonous aberration were too tantalizing to resist, ignoring the warnings of her neighbors and the eerie atmosphere that surrounded the town. Sarah embarked on her quest. Armed with a lantern and a resolve that rivaled the bravest adventurers, she ventured into the cursed woods. The same foreboding whispers filled the air, but Sarah remained determined to uncover the truth, as she journeyed deeper into the forest, she stumbled upon the same dilapidated cabin that had once been the meeting point for the ill-fated group. The cabin's walls bore witness to the screams of those who had encountered the gluttonous aberration, and its interior was marked by decay and despair. In the center of the cabin, Sarah found a tattered journal left behind by one of the doomed friends. It contained a chilling account of their encounter, revealing more about the creature's insatiable hunger for suffering and its terrifying power to feed on human misery, the journal warned of the dangers of the summoning circle, cautioning against disturbing the malevolent entity that lurked within the woods. 
It implored anyone who found it to abandon their quest and flee while they still could. Sarah, however, was undeterred. She believed that confronting the darkness was the only way to truly understand it. Ignoring the ominous warnings, she decided to conduct her own scenes, determined to communicate with the gluttonous aberration and uncover its secrets, as the scenes began, a sense of impending dread filled the cabin. The candles flickered, casting eerie shadows on the walls. The atmosphere grew heavy with despair, and the temperature dropped to bone-chilling levels. Sarah's voice trembled as she called upon the entity, the room filled with an unnatural presence, and from the crude circle etched into the cabin's wooden floor, tendrils of darkness emerged. The gluttonous aberration materialized once more. A grotesque amalgamation of suffering and misery. Its countless eyes fixated on Sarah, who found herself paralyzed with fear, the entity began to speak, its voice echoing in the minds of all who dared to listen. It revealed that it was not merely a creature of the forest but a manifestation of humanity's darkest impulses. It thrived on the despair and suffering that resided within every soul, as the scenes continued, Sarah's deepest fears and desires were laid bare. The gluttonous aberration fed on her torment, growing more powerful with each passing moment. She realized the true horror of the legend, the entity was a reflection of the darkness that dwelled within all of us, and it would consume anyone who dared to confront it. In the end, Sarah, like those before her, was dragged into the earth, her mind and soul devoured by the gluttonous aberration. The cabin fell into silence, the lantern's flame extinguished, and the forest reclaimed its sinister secret, the legend persisted, as it always had, and Blackwood remained a town shrouded in fear. No one would dare enter the cursed woods again, for the gluttonous aberration continued to wait, hungry for the next soul bold enough to seek the truth and confront the depths of human darkness. Years passed, and the town of Blackwood became a place of perpetual dread, with stories of the gluttonous aberration serving as a chilling reminder of the darkness that dwelled within us all. The forest was left undisturbed, and the cabin where the ill-fated senses had taken place stood as a decaying relic of the past, shrouded in an aura of menace, however, the fear and curiosity of the outside world eventually reached the secluded town. In the age of social media and sensationalist news, Blackwood's legend began to attract the attention of thrill-seekers, paranormal investigators, and those who believed they could conquer the unspeakable, a new group of outsiders, armed with an array of modern gadgets, arrived in Blackwood, intent on capturing evidence of the gluttonous aberration's existence. They were equipped with night vision cameras, audio recording devices, and an unwavering determination to uncover the truth, or so they thought, as they ventured into the forest, they documented every step of their journey, their breath visible in the cold night air. The ghostly whispers of the forest surrounded them, but they pushed forward, their cameras recording every eerie sound and strange occurrence, the group reached the dilapidated cabin, their excitement mounting as they realized they were standing on the very ground where the legend had first taken root. They set up their equipment inside the cabin. Determined to conduct a scenes and capture the entity on film, their scenes began, and the atmosphere grew thick with anticipation. The room seemed to come alive, as if the gluttonous aberration itself was aware of their presence. The cameras rolled, capturing the flickering candles and the growing unease in the faces of the investigators. As they chanted the incantations, the room trembled with an eerie energy. Shadows danced on the walls, and the temperature plummeted. Suddenly, from the same circle etched into the cabin's floor, the darkness began to manifest, the gluttonous aberration emerged, more horrific and grotesque than ever. Its multitude of eyes bore into the intruder's souls, and a guttural, otherworldly voice filled their minds. It seemed to revel in the fear and curiosity that had brought them to this place, but these investigators were not like those who had come before. Armed with a determination to confront the darkness, they had prepared themselves for the encounter. One by one, they revealed their innermost fears and desires. But instead of succumbing to the entity's power, they stood their ground, the gluttonous aberration, 
for the first time in centuries, was met with resilience. The entity's grip on their minds wavered as the investigators resisted its power. They demanded answers, seeking to understand the nature of the legend and the darkness it represented, as they pressed the entity for information. It reluctantly revealed that its existence was a reflection of humanity's capacity for both darkness and light. It thrived on suffering and despair, but it was also bound to the balance of human nature. Its power waned when confronted with courage and resolve, with their newfound knowledge, the investigators managed to weaken the gluttonous aberration, causing it to retreat into the earth. The cabin fell silent, and the forest seemed to sigh in relief. The legend of the gluttonous aberration persisted, but it was no longer a force to be feared by those who dared to confront it. Blackwood remained a town shrouded in mystery, but the curse of the creature had been lifted, and its grip on the town's psyche began to loosen. The investigators left Blackwood, having uncovered the truth about the legend. The world beyond would continue to be fascinated by the dark story, but the town's residents began to heal, knowing that the darkness within them could be confronted and overcome, and so, the legend of the gluttonous aberration served as a haunting reminder of the depths of human nature, but it also held the promise that courage and resilience could triumph over the most unspeakable horrors. With the curse of the gluttonous aberration gradually lifting from Blackwood, the town began to experience a period of cautious recovery, the once pervasive fear and dread slowly gave way to a sense of hope and renewal. The cabin where the ill-fated senses had taken place was left to crumble into obscurity, a symbol of the town's painful past. In the years that followed, Blackwood transformed itself, no longer haunted by the malevolent entity that had plagued it for centuries. The dark history of the town became a distant memory, and its residents began to lead more ordinary lives, unburdened by the horrors of the past, the outside world, however, continued to be fascinated by the legend of the gluttonous aberration. Paranormal enthusiasts and curious adventurers still occasionally journeyed to Blackwood, drawn by the chilling stories and eerie history. Some sought to document the town's transformation, while others hoped to encounter remnants of the entity that had once terrorized the area. As the town gradually regained its sense of normalcy, it also began to capitalize on its unique history. Local businesses started to cater to tourists, offering guided tours of the forest and visits to the now famous cabin. Blackwood's economy saw a resurgence as travelers from near and far flocked to the town, hoping to catch a glimpse of the supernatural. The town's leaders, recognizing the potential for economic growth, embraced the legend as part of their heritage. They organized annual festivals and events, incorporating the gluttonous aberration into the town's culture. The legend became a source of pride for Blackwood, a testament to the strength and resilience of its people. The investigators who had confronted the gluttonous aberration continued to study the entity from a distance, determined to unlock the secrets of its existence. They established a research center in Blackwood, attracting scholars and scientists from around the world. The town, once a symbol of dread, now became a hub for the study of the supernatural over time. The entity's power waned further, as its influence was diluted by the strength of human resilience and understanding. The balance between darkness and light remained tenuous, but the legend of the gluttonous aberration no longer held the same terror it once did. Blackwood, once isolated and shrouded in darkness, found itself at the crossroads of history and legend, a place where humanity's fascination with the unknown and its ability to confront its deepest fears had forged a unique path to healing and transformation. The story of the gluttonous aberration would live on, not as a tale of unrelenting horror, but as a testament to the enduring spirit of humanity in the face of the most monstrous of legends. As the years passed, Blackwood continued to evolve, becoming a place known not just for its dark history but for its resilience and the unique balance it had struck between its past and present. The town became a symbol of transformation, a testament to the indomitable human spirit in the face of the darkest of legends, the research center in Blackwood, dedicated to the study of supernatural phenomena, grew in prestige and attracted scholars from various fields, 
including psychology, parapsychology, and folklore. Together, they delved into the depths of the gluttonous aberrations law, seeking to understand how such a malevolent force could be confronted and weakened. Their research yielded valuable insights into the nature of the entity. They discovered that the key to confronting the gluttonous aberration lay not just in courage but in understanding and compassion. By addressing the root causes of suffering and despair, individuals and communities could build resilience against the entity's influence. Blackwood became a hub for mental health initiatives, supporting its residents in finding ways to cope with the darkness that resided within them. The town offered therapy, support groups, and educational programs to help individuals confront their deepest fears and anxieties. These efforts led to a decrease in the influence of the gluttonous aberration, the town's festivals and events, once centered around the legend, evolved into celebrations of community and healing. Residents and visitors alike gathered to commemorate Blackwood's transformation, acknowledging that the entity's legacy had become a force for positive change. The once famous cabin, where the gluttonous aberration had been summoned and confronted, was preserved as a historical site. It served as a somber reminder of the town's past and the darkness it had overcome. People from all over the world came to visit, paying their respects to the brave individuals who had confronted the entity and the town's remarkable journey to recovery. The investigators, who had played a crucial role in weakening the entity, continued their work. They sought to understand the universal human capacity for both darkness and light, aiming to develop strategies to prevent the resurgence of similar malevolent entities. Their research became a beacon of hope for communities grappling with supernatural forces around the world. In the end, Blackwood's transformation from a place of despair to one of resilience and understanding became an inspirational story, spreading far beyond the town's borders. It proved that even the most horrifying legends could be faced, understood, and overcome when communities united in their pursuit of healing and self-discovery, and so, the gluttonous aberration, once a source of terror, became a catalyst for positive change, reminding the world that even the darkest of legends could be confronted and ultimately transformed into a force for good. The town of Blackwood, once plagued by fear, had emerged as a symbol of hope and resilience in the face of the unknown. In the wake of Blackwood's transformation, stories of supernatural occurrences continued to draw the curious and the brave to the town. The newfound knowledge about the gluttonous aberration sparked an interest in other dark forces that may have taken root in the Appalachian Mountains. One chilling tale that circulated was that of the wretched wraiths. These malevolent spirits were said to be the souls of individuals who had been driven to madness by the relentless whispers of the forest. They wandered the woods, their spectral forms twisted and contorted, their eyes hollow voids of despair, as the interest in these entities grew. Daring adventurers descended upon Blackwood in search of the wretched wraiths. Armed with advanced ghost hunting equipment and a morbid curiosity, they explored the forest's shadowy depths, hoping to capture evidence of the restless spirits. One moonless night, a group of investigators set up camp near the same dilapidated cabin where the gluttonous aberration had been confronted. They planned to conduct a scenes, hoping to communicate with the wretched wraiths and understand the source of their torment. As they chanted incantations and the temperature dropped, a ghastly presence filled the cabin. The air grew thick with despair, and the investigators' cameras captured eerie anomalies, apparitions, distorted voices, and moving shadows. It was as if the forest itself was alive with the anguish of the lost souls. The scenes reached its peak and the wretched wraiths emerged from the same circle in the cabin's floor. Their forms were nightmarish, their faces twisted in anguish, and their spectral hands reached out toward the intruders. As they spoke, their voices carried the torment of a thousand souls. The investigators, driven by morbid curiosity, attempted to communicate with the wretched wraiths. They asked questions about the source of their suffering and the secrets of the forest. The answers they received were a cacophony of despair, a twisted symphony of madness, but as the scenes progressed, the investigators realized the horrifying truth, the wretched wraiths had lured them in, and their malevolent intent became apparent. 
The spirit sought to torment the living, feeding on the fear and despair of those who dared to confront them. In a terrifying twist, the wretched wraiths began to manifest themselves outside the cabin, surrounding the investigators, their twisted, ethereal forms closing in. The group's fear reached a crescendo as the wraiths whispered nightmarish secrets and delusions into their minds. The investigators' once unwavering resolve began to crumble, and they found themselves trapped in a waking nightmare. The forest itself seemed to come alive with grotesque, otherworldly creatures, as if responding to the wraith's malevolence. In their panic, the investigators tried to flee the cabin, but the wraiths pursued them relentlessly, their anguished wails echoing through the night. Some of the investigators succumbed to madness, while others were consumed by the relentless onslaught of the spirits, the forest, forever tainted by the darkness of the wretched wraiths retained its sinister secrets, and the legend of Blackwood continued to grow. It became a place where the boundaries between the living and the dead, the real and the supernatural, were blurred, and where even the bravest souls could be swallowed by the relentless horrors of the Appalachian Mountains. The survivors of the harrowing encounter with the wretched wraiths managed to escape the cabin, their minds forever scarred by the torment they had endured. They fled the forest, their terror echoing in the still night, the town of Blackwood was once again engulfed in fear as news of the latest tragedy spread. The legend that had once become a symbol of resilience now seemed to have taken on a life of its own, as if the darkness of the past was returning to haunt the town, local authorities initiated an investigation, but the survivors' accounts were fragmented and incoherent. They could offer little explanation for what had occurred in the forest, and their experiences seemed more like fevered nightmares than tangible evidence. As the investigation deepened, a retired professor of folklore, Dr. Eleanor Pendleton, arrived in Blackwood. She had dedicated her life to the study of supernatural phenomena and had a particular interest in the Appalachian Mountains. Dr. Pendleton was determined to uncover the truth behind the legends that plagued the region. She began her research by delving into the town's history, uncovering long-forgotten accounts of strange happenings in the forest. Some stories spoke of otherworldly creatures lurking in the darkness, while others described the forest itself as a sentient, malevolent entity, exacting revenge on those who dared to intrude. Dr. Pendleton's investigation led her to uncover a rare, ancient grimoire known as the Codex of Shadows, hidden in the archives of the local library. The Codex was rumored to contain knowledge about the forest's supernatural inhabitants, including the wretched wraiths, driven by a relentless curiosity and a desire to unravel the mysteries of Blackwood, Dr. Pendleton translated the cryptic text within the Codex. Its pages revealed that the wretched wraiths were, in fact, guardians of an even darker secret, a portal to an alternate dimension, a realm of nightmarish horrors. As she delved deeper into her research, Dr. Pendleton began to suspect that the forest itself was a living entity, a sentient being with malevolent intent. It had a thirst for the torment of those who dared to enter, feeding on their fear and despair. She theorized that the wretched wraiths were not just lost souls but manifestations of the forest's malevolence, luring intruders into the alternate dimension to sate the ancient hunger of the land itself. With her newfound knowledge, Dr. Pendleton returned to the cabin in the forest, determined to confront the darkness that had plagued Blackwood for centuries. Armed with protective amulets and a resolve forged in the fires of curiosity and determination, she initiated her own scenes, as the incantations echoed through the cabin and the air grew thick with dread, the wretched wraiths materialized once more. Their malevolent intent was palpable, and they descended upon her, seeking to ensnare her in their web of despair, but Dr. Pendleton, armed with her knowledge of the Codex of Shadows, revealed the truth to the wraiths. She implored them to release their victims, to break the cycle of torment, and to let the forest find peace. The wraiths, confronted with the knowledge that had been kept hidden for centuries, hesitated. They wailed in anguish, their twisted forms writhing, caught between their malevolent nature and the truth. In a suspenseful and climactic twist, the wretched wraiths began to dissipate, their anguish no longer able to sustain their existence. 
The forest itself seemed to shudder, as if the land itself was experiencing a transformation. As the wraiths faded into nothingness, Blackwood's legend took another unexpected turn. Dr. Pendleton's courage and determination had broken the cycle of torment, and the town began to experience a newfound sense of peace. The Codex of Shadows was returned to its hidden place in the library, its secrets now revealed and understood. Blackwood became a symbol not only of resilience but also of the power of knowledge and the triumph of courage over the darkest of legends, but as the town basked in its newfound tranquility, it remained a place where the line between reality and the supernatural was forever blurred, where the mysteries of the forest continued to beckon the curious and the brave, and where the future held its own suspenseful secrets. Years passed, and Blackwood's transformation had given the town a semblance of peace. Dr. Eleanor Pendleton's revelations about the forest had brought a sense of understanding and control allowing residents to live their lives with newfound confidence and resilience. The legend of the gluttonous aberration and the wretched wraiths became part of the town's rich history, and Blackwood thrived as a community of both bravery and knowledge, however, beneath the surface, a growing sense of unease lingered among the town's elders. They had always known that the supernatural forces in the forest were not the only dark secrets hidden within the Appalachian Mountains. There were whispers of an even more malevolent and enigmatic entity, one that had remained hidden for centuries, biding its time, these elders believed in a sinister entity known only as the Void Enigma. They had always feared that revealing its existence would unleash unimaginable horrors. But the time had come to confront this lurking darkness. The town's leaders sought to investigate and, if possible, banish the Void Enigma from the heart of Blackwood, Dr. Pendleton, having dedicated her life to the study of supernatural phenomena, was summoned once again to assist in this endeavor. Her knowledge of the Codex of Shadows and her determination to uncover the truth made her the ideal candidate to lead the investigation. The group of investigators, accompanied by Dr. Pendleton, ventured deep into the forest, guided by ancient maps and cryptic symbols that had been passed down through generations. Their journey was fraught with peril as the forest itself seemed to resist their intrusion, the closer they came to their destination, the more the air grew oppressive, and strange occurrences multiplied. Shadows seemed to move of their own volition, and whispers of agony filled their ears. The forest's malevolence appeared to be gathering its strength, as they reached their final destination, a massive, gnarled tree stood before them, its roots stretching deep into the earth. The tree was said to be the gateway to the void enigma's realm. A place where time and space converged in nightmarish ways, Dr. Pendleton began to recite incantations and protective spells, creating a barrier to shield the investigators from the malevolent entity's influence. With a sense of impending dread, they approached the tree and the gaping black moor at its base. Suddenly, the void enigma began to manifest itself, a swirling vortex of darkness, tentacles, and eyes. Its presence exuded an overwhelming sense of despair and hopelessness, far more sinister than anything they had encountered before, the investigators felt their sanity slipping away as the void enigma's influence enveloped them. The forest itself seemed to warp and contort, and the investigators found themselves trapped in a surreal, nightmarish landscape. In a suspenseful and chilling twist, the investigators realized that the only way to confront the void enigma was to embrace their own fears and vulnerabilities. They had to accept the darkness within themselves and turn it against the malevolent entity. As they struggled to do so, a climactic battle of wills ensued. The forest itself became a battleground between the void enigma and the investigators, a place where reality and nightmare were locked in a relentless struggle. In a shocking revelation, the void enigma began to weaken as the investigators tapped into their inner darkness. Their courage and determination to face their deepest fears, rather than succumb to them, drained the malevolent entity of its power, with a final, suspenseful burst of resolve, the investigators banished the void enigma back into the heart of the forest, sealing the gateway and ending its reign of darkness. The forest returned to a semblance of normalcy. And the town of Blackwood could finally breathe a sigh of relief, 
But the enigmatic and supernatural forces of the Appalachian Mountains continued to beckon the curious and the brave, and the town remained a place where mysteries, suspense, and the unknown were always lurking just beneath the surface. As Blackwood's residents and the investigators returned to the safety of the town, they couldn't shake the feeling that their confrontation with the void enigma had only scratched the surface of the mysteries lurking in the forest. The darkness that had plagued the town for centuries was not so easily banished, and the enigmatic forces of the Appalachian Mountains continued to beckon, shrouded in an aura of suspense, while the immediate threat of the void enigma had been quelled, the elders of Blackwood knew that the ancient legends of the forest held more secrets yet to be uncovered. The town's future remained uncertain, and a sense of unease lingered in the air, as if the darkest mysteries were only beginning to unravel. But for now, the story of Blackwood's struggle with the supernatural had come to an end, and the town found a moment of hard-won peace. The legends that had once inspired terror had become part of their history, a testament to the indomitable spirit of those who dared to confront the unknown. The dark secrets of Blackwood's past and the enigmatic forces of the forest awaited those brave enough to continue the journey. Will you dare to delve deeper into the chilling mysteries of this cursed town? Subscribe to our channel for part 2, where we'll uncover more twisted tales and suspenseful revelations from the heart of Blackwood.